So, what brings you here today? So, Doc, I've been waiting six months for this appointment. I don't even know why I'm here. You know, Tim, I don't know why we are either. You want to do this a different way? Damn right I do. Uh huh. Just you like that. How do you want to begin it? I think it's a good place. Well, I mean, I'm I'm just happy that we get to have the conversation, and you look more like you and less. I'm a person. Right, like a I'm real. I'm me now. Like a real person. Are you you? And not the and not the <laughs> and not the definition of the stiff doctor. The stiff doctor of like, all right, tell me what your thing is, and here's your little pill, and you'll go figure it out. I think it's it's great to see you and have the conversation with it. You be you, which is kind of your target, anyways. Is how do we how do we do this where you get to be you and I get to be me and well, and unless you then. feel comfortable to shed your armor, you know, <laughs> so to, like li literally, but unless you feel comfortable, and uh, we're not going to get anywhere. So right. I've learned a long time ago if you're going to, if you actually want to help people, you have to learn to adapt yourself um, to be helpful to them instead yeah. of trying to get people to fit into your model. And, you know, I think that's pretty important because, you know, speaking of somebody that's been in and out of the system, I can remember very vividly the first time I went and, you know, it, it was like there was a, I had a, a, a bunch of walls of defense put up. Uh, I didn't trust the person sitting on the other side of me, like, who is this clown? What does he, what does he know? I mean, right. has this guy ever been seen? Has this guy ever been shot at before? Uh, I mean, those, those are all those things that go through my mind. I mean, I'm very apprehensive about even relating anything. It was like four sessions with this individual before I even really started to talk about things that were truly bothering me. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think that's probably something that everybody's experiencing. Well, sure, because in that situation, I'm not being me. That's not my normal way of looking. That's not how I dress on right. a daily basis. Right. That's not how I do life. So why would I expect you to shed your, you know, character uh, of being a veteran, a combat veteran, when I'm still in a character of a stereotypical, right. you know, yeah. mental health professional, instead of just being a person and listening to you, mm -hmm. um, you've got skills that you use to serve that I don't have, and I'm very grateful for those. And I have different skills. I spent my time being trained in a different way, and now maybe you need some of my skills. And that's all it is. We're both people, highly, highly trained people, but we have different things and we can help each other with them. And if we can both come forward and be who we are, we can actually gain trust and right. get somewhere. It, it really is that it's that first that fig, right? Mm -hmm. It's uh, how how can I trust you to be in my tribe? Mm -hmm. right? I'm, this is a very specific tribe. If I can't trust you, I don't want you in my tribe. Well, I don't want you to know my story. It's also also that environment is almost instantaneously a me versus you environment, yeah. right? It's you're coming in. And that that doctor, that white jacket is assuming you're broken and I can fix it. So you just need to, you don't know what you're doing, let me handle it for you. So you're automatically in this versus environment. And when you have, especially trained soldiers, regardless of branch, but when, you, when you're trained to be effective in a combat scenario and you go into, sure, maybe it's just a battle of words, but now you're still in this combat scenario, you're stuck in that perpetual you versus me model and you're not looking for a partner. You're not looking for somebody that's going to walk that path with you to something better and more helpful. You're going in there going like, sure, tell me I'm wrong so I can prove you that, so yeah. I can prove to you I'm right. And that's that's not an environment that's going to help, like you said, garner trust. It's not mm -hmm. going to uh, help make a plan. It's not going to develop you in a way that you can you can build on that, and so I'd like to hear more about kind of where you started witnessing that, and then sure. uh, you said some things earlier that I'd love to hear more about about just kind of you you essentially rolled it back and just went like there's a simpler, more effective way to do this. Mm -hmm. There is, and with what you were saying, uh, when you walk into to an office, and you know, when, like earlier, and I'm I might be an expert on the tools in my toolbox. You hope that I am. You hope I've studied well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and I know about that. But that's what I'm an expert on. And when you're never an expert on another human being, certainly not an expert on a combat veteran. But my clients are experts on their own life. They know their life. They know they were there. They were there the whole time. They know how they felt about it, what it meant to them, all those different things. So I don't need to understand that exactly. They just need me to be an expert on the tools of my toolbox. 
So like I said, you know, when you walk into a situation and somebody acts like they know more about you than yourself and they can fix you, that's gonna set you at the defensive, as you said, as opposed to somebody saying, what can I help you with? I've got some tools here. You know, you know what you need to work on. You know what's bothering you. I have these things. Let's start at the beginning. See how this works. Turn this three times to the left. How's that? Maybe that doesn't work. I've got something else. And just making your way as a partnership, like you said, you're not going to someone to tell you what to do, to fix you. To, and nobody will really ever understand your story and how it was for you in that situation, sure. you know? but. Uh, you don't really need to to be able to get the help that you need. And I think that's what that's what makes it so powerful is that you're you're taking an approach. One, all of us that put the uniform on, we understand the one team, one fight mentality. And especially if we if you look at squad dynamics, right? You have you can have a squad that all have that base level, but then each one of them has that specific tool that they're bringing to it that 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 strengthen the squad as a whole. And you're not saying you're not taking a do as I tell you to do scenario. You were going like, hey, no, let's squat up together and we're gonna find this new path mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring some of my specialty in and you're gonna bring some of your specialty in and we're gonna figure out how that one plus one is making three because it's just far more effective than it is for anybody to try and fight this fight alone. You can't, you can't address these issues with conventional methods, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, you know, you're, you're really looking at a traumatic event that there's no, it's not a, there's not a truly really baseline because every event is different for you, for you, mm -hmm. for me. And we could have all been in the same vehicle and have experienced the same contact, but the, what we walked away with is a completely different experience. So I've been, you know, like I said, I've been through the system. You know, mm -hmm. I had a gun in my mouth, mm -hmm. about, I'm virtually committing suicide, uh, lost nearly everything that was important in my life, but I can never, get to the point of talking about that with with uh, somebody on the other side of me, right? Sure. Uh, in a way that was ever going to be something that was going to be beneficial to me because I was still struggling with the traumatic event. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even talk about the traumatic event. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to even get to the point where now I'm even further off and I'm thinking of having thoughts of suicide? Sure. Well, how, do, how, do, how, does, how do you do that with conventional methods? Well, again, the same kind of sentiment that you have to, if you really want to help people, you adapt yourself to them. So people always tell me, oh, why don't you train a bunch of other therapists to do what you do? I'm like, well, first I have to start with the baseline with somebody who understands and is comfortable in being real and not clinging to a protocol. Because I don't believe in fitting somebody into a step one through 20. I don't have a protocol where I, I put everybody through the same thing. Um, the way that people get traumatized, human beings get traumatically stored memories, and the way that we correct the traumatically stored memories is the same. It's a human thing, it's the way the body works. However, how we get there, each person, it has different terrain. Like, how I get there with you is different how, than how I get there from, with the next guy. And the conventional methods often are a protocol. It's session one, here's what we do. Here's session two, here's what we do. And you're trying to make people fit into a cookie cutter protocol as opposed to looking at the person in front of you and saying, okay, where are you right now? Okay, try this. And then I don't know where to go next until I get feedback from my client. My course is subject to my client's feedback. It truly is a, is a partnership. I don't know your solutions. I don't know your um, resolution to your traumatically stored memory. You do, you have the content, but you don't know where it is. So basically I hand you tools and together we mine it out and you can find what it is and then we'll do it. So two, it's, it's kind of like things you haven't ever put together. You don't know to go back and grab this and this piece matches that. But with my tools, I can do that and help make some sense of things uh, with you, not for you, but with you. You have the content. All right, Doc, if we were gonna break it down Barney style, can you explain to me why you don't treat symptoms and only worry about the actual trauma source? Absolutely, because you can chase the symptoms. You can try to, um, squelch the anxiety or the depression or anger problems or whatever they are or medicate away sleep problems but the source of those symptoms is a traumatically stored memory a fragmented memory of a traumatic event and all we have to do is fix the information storage issue and the symptoms will fall away whatever they are so i don't spend a lot of time 
monkeying around with whatever symptoms somebody has because whatever they are, they're going to go away. For example, if you've always been a bad sleeper your whole life and you never slept even as a child more than a few hours and you still are a bad sleeper, then that's just you. But if you slept what you felt was normal within normal range or something and then after a traumatic event, all of a sudden you don't sleep anymore, for example. If we fix and we reprocess the traumatically stored memory, that shouldn't be an issue for you anymore. And I just use sleep, there are many other, other symptoms, you know? Sure. Emotional numbness, maybe you can't feel anymore. You used to be able to, to feel and engage, you know, and, and you know, uh, emotional exchanges. And now you just kind of feel flat all the time. You haven't always Guilty. been like that. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about the pucker factor. Right, the clenching. The yes, social. I talked about clenching. The first time I said it in front of a military audience, I went in, first time in front of them, and I said, you know, you clench, and your, your brain stores information differently, and they said, Doc, are you talking about the pucker factor? And I said, ew, gross, but graphic, and is that what you guys call it? Yeah, I'm like, all right. And so then, We've got the shirts yeah, the that you guys made. Yes, Pucker Factor Zero, after you get treatment, you don't get triggered so you can stay chill. No clenching, no matter what context you're in. So you can find <laughs> that at gruntstyle.com. And you should. <laughs>